Welcome back. This is the third episode of my weekly Tesla FSD stats report. I drive my Tesla Model Y Juniper 100% of the time with full self-driving enabled, and every week I track real-world stats to share with you. Weekly Recap This week, I drove 435 miles over 11 hours, with FSD engaged the entire time. Overall, it was a solid week. 1.6 minor issues per 100 miles, 0.9 intermediate issues, 0.5 major issues. Weather was clear 91% of the time, with 9% rain. Road mix, 42% highway, 29% city, and 29% country roads. What worked well? First, railroad crossings. I've often complained that FSD struggled here, sometimes stopping on the tracks. But this week, it handled some crossings nicely, waiting before the tracks and only moving once there was space on the other side. It still struggles a bit when tracks are on a hill, but this was a big improvement. Another good example, FSD's politeness. It consistently yielded to cars merging, and even to a pedestrian waiting on the side of the road. You'll see later on that FSD is not always polite, though. On a 74-mile highway trip, I experienced zero issues and only one active control warning. Highway driving continues to be handled very well, though debris remains something to watch out for. Issues this week. Minor issues. 1.6 per 100 miles. For potholes, one tire on the road, one missed turn, and one odd lane choice on a country road. On this video, you can see that in long lines for turns, FSD sometimes tries to move up to the light and merge later. While this would save me time, I intervened, because it isn't fair to other drivers. Intermediate issues, 0.9 per 100 miles. This week I got three cases of speeding in school or work zones and one railroad issue. Also during heavy rain, FSD asked me to take over. Honestly, I could barely see the road myself, so that was understandable and is not really an issue for me. Still, it raises the question, how would a robotaxi handle this? Probably pull over and wait. Let me know in the comments if you experienced this already. Speeding in school zones is still a concern. For example, with flashing lights requiring 25 miles per hour, FSD kept going 35 until I manually adjusted. Definitely an area where extra vigilance is required. Major issues, 0.5 per 100 miles. Two cases. First, FSD entered a left turn lane, but then went straight. Sorry, I don't have any footage for this one. Second, on a street under construction with no markings, FSD mistook the left lane for a turn lane and drove into it. Thankfully, no oncoming cars. Special test. Since there were fewer issues this week, I ran a fun experiment. A road that had been closed for six months just reopened. Google Maps still showed it closed, but the car's display didn't. When I re-enabled FSD, it repeatedly tried to turn around. Clearly, FSD was following the Google Maps data instead of trusting the cameras. I've already submitted a correction on Google Maps, and I'll retest once it updates. Here's how the numbers look over the past three weeks. Minor issues, down to 1.6 per 100 miles. Intermediate issues, down below 1 per 100 miles. Major issues, lowest yet at 0.5 per 100 miles. Active monitoring disengagements, improving to once every 37 minutes. And on average, 42 minutes without any single issues, even minor. This is impressive. Hand-free time, averaging 20 minutes without touching the wheel at all. That wraps up this week's Tesla FSD Weekly Stats Report. If you'd like to follow the progress and see more real-world driving data, make sure to subscribe and check out my other videos and shorts on the channel.